this is the pomegranate orchard. We started our experiments with pomegranate. Pomegranate is a hardy crop in terms of water requirement. Initially, we used to do a lot of sugarcane, but then after studying monocropping of sugarcane and the fact that it is very water intensive, soil exhausting crop, we decided to change our cropping pattern. That's when we shifted to orchards. In orchards, we chose pomegranate. It requires very less water. And uh, you can practically keep it untilled for n number of years. So that's the reason we decided to do a pomegranate orchard. We did a high density pomegranate orchard. And this is the fourth crop. It's been two and a half, three years now for the orchard. So if you see around, the fruit is uh, kind of due for harvesting now. In another month's time, we'll have to remove all the fruit and send it to the market. So while doing this orchard, uh, traditional, uh, traditional knowledge, traditional know-how always told us that keep your orchard extremely clean and spick and span. Otherwise, you'll attract n number of pests and diseases. But our, uh, our know-how of organic farming kind of propelled us to do it the other way. So we always wanted a biodiverse farm. We always wanted a, a multi-cropping farm. And uh, so we decided to plant a couple of dicots in the pomegranate. So pomegranate is a monocot. Then we planted a desi tur. So a desi tur is an indigenous pigeon pea. This variety is more or less non-existent or has been reduced to... I mean, no farmer grows it right now because the ones that are prescribed by the government and agriculture colleges are all the hybrid varieties. The hybrid varieties take four months to grow, whereas the desi tur variety takes around eight to nine months to grow. But the tur quality, the tur aroma, the way it cooks and the nutrition is it's a class apart and it's very nutritious tur. So we planted as an intercrop between the pomegranate what we have done is we have kept every alternate row mulched. So this row is for is for the I mean for us to walk around and observe the crop and and give our uh, organic fertilizers. And the other row is full of mulch. So we have prunings of the tur. We have prunings of uh, the pomegranate. Some of them and a lot of uh, sugarcane dried leaves and whatever farm remains that we have. So we have bajra remains. We have jowar remains. We have wheat remains. We put it in this strip of uh, mulch and the drip irrigation is in this strip. And the intercrops also are planted in this strip. So you observe there's, there's a mulch of close to half to one feet right now. It's a mulch of from the past two years that we've been accumulating. The microbiology under this mulch is very high. You'll find all the kinds of bacteria, fungi, nem healthy nematodes, protozoa, earthworms in a very high quantity. And those are the guys we need on the farm who f help fertilize and make the farm soil even richer. So we have uh, some uh, drumstick trees also in the orchard. So drumstick is again a dicot plant. It helps fix nitrogen along with the tur. And they shed their, both the dicots shed their leaves very fast. The leaves are rich in nitrogen that helps mulching also and that helps recycle the nutrients for the pomegranates and for themselves. So the advantage of having uh, Moringa, that's the drumstick tree, Moringa olifera. The advantage of having a Moringa olifera tree in the orchard is and Moringa olifera tree needs close to 7,000 candle feet per square foot of light. Whereas a drumstick tree cannot... Uh, you know, carry on its photosynthesis in light that is more than 3,500 candle, candles per square feet. And ideally in an Indian uh, climate, the sun is the sun's intensity from morning 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. is close to six to 7,000 candles per square feet. So maximum of the time when the sun is very high from 10 o'clock to 5, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., the stomata closes down of a pomegranate tree and photosynthesis is reduced. So basically the ability to produce better fruit and more fruit is reduced. But when you have it intercrop with these plants, these dicots kind of take in maximum of the sun and pass half the sun down to the to this monocot, to this pomegranate. And then both are symbiotic, so kind of they get the amount of sunlight they require and uh, they benefit each other, These both these intercrops. So if you year around, if you closely observe, there are a lot of bird varieties, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of other 
weed varieties as we call it weeds in a certain fashion are also beneficial after the plant has grown has grown to a certain height where it's not competing with the weed so in weeds there are close to 20 25 varieties of weed each weed will do some kind of beneficial activity some will fix nitrogen some will fix potassium some will fix phosphorus some will fix the one of the 17 micronutrients and they will in turn fertilize the soil so the max we do is uh, we don't spray any weedy side and uh, any herbicide what we do is we use a brush cutter in the lane that we normally walk through the mulching lane we keep it uh, as it is so the weed grows it dies it grows it dies and it and the remains help enrich the soil carbon in this so i'll just dig and show you the mulching strip and how the biology in the mul mulching strip has developed so as i told you there's a lot of various kinds of mulching that we do in the pomegranate orchard primarily among them is sugarcane leaves dried bajra stalks and then they are mixed with the tur leaves and the drumstick moringa oleifera leaves that are dicots to form humus so if you dig in the mulching strip you will find a lot of this is this is the fungi this is a very healthy fungus and uh, if you check the soil it's all become a bed of you can see the worms they're wriggling around yeah so there are many earthworms and uh, other microbiology that you cannot see by your by your naked eyes and this is all the earthworm castings so they've made the soil extremely porous so if you see they they're going down now yeah so we have on on an average of close to 25 to 30 earthworms per square feet in the first two inches of soil so they have you see a big one out here yeah so they have made the soil extremely fertile here there's a large one just went inside now it says yeah so you'll find a lot of microbiology this is see yeah, there's another worm this is uh, the microbiology that you can this is the biology that you can see with your eyes but apart from this you know so much so much uh, healthy soil contains more number of living organisms bacteria fungi healthy nematodes protozoa and stuff than there are human beings on earth so this much soil will contain close to 7 billion microbiology life in this and that is what makes the unavailable format of nutrients into an available format into a readily available format which the tree roots can immediately pick up and fertilize themselves so when the soil is so rich the tree gets what it wants the fruit is very rich in the nutrients all the nutrients are in an available format and uh, i mean there is no comparison between the nutrients available in an organic fruit and the nutrients available in an, in an chemically based orchard fruit so they are they are taken up naturally they are in a natural format and they are in multiple times when you compare it to them to a normal fruit